Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Sunday night. Just checking to make sure that I've got everything working here. You guys will have to let me know in the chat if you ever can't hear me um, because I can't always tell. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> How's it going, guys? I hope that you're doing well and that you're having a good weekend. Um, welcome to Kickstart with Gratitude. It's Sunday, December 13th. Can you believe we're coming in on Christmas? I'm still kind of in denial that it's like 12 days away. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for just what this season represents, excited for family time. I'm really grateful for that. So welcome to you guys signing in on Facebook. I'm glad you're here. If you guys, like I said a minute ago, if you're just signing on, if you ever can't hear me, just please comment in the chat so that I can make sure we fix that. Um, okay, and I love to hear what's going on in your worlds too. So and feel free to engage in the conversation. So if you're new here, um, I am Andrea Olson and I started this Sunday night kickstart with gratitude about maybe two months ago or six weeks ago, something like that. It was just something that the Lord put on my heart for uh, being a opportunity to reset and refocus because I found that my time was Sunday nights as I was getting ready for the week and kind of you know, making plans, whether it was meal plans or homeschooling plans or just work plans, ministry plans, whatever, um, they were happening on Sunday night and I was starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit stressed out, sometimes frustrated. And so I really just wanted to take this opportunity on Sunday nights to bring you along in my journey because I was wanting to take the time on Sunday nights to sit and to just um, be <laughs> and realign my heart and refocus and prep for the week. And so that's what the purpose of these are, to bring you along in that and hopefully you can do the same. And my goal is to just be an encouragement to you and, you know, in these times to focus on gratitude. If you've been here before, you know that. And because we believe that when we choose to live in gratitude, things change. Our our hearts change, our perspective shifts. Does it change our circumstances? Probably not, but it gives us a healthier perspective in them. And I believe that it also brings clarity. And so maybe you can navigate your way through your challenges just a little bit easier and a little bit more successfully because you are able to think with clarity because your, your heart and mind aren't dwelling in the pit and in the depths, but you're dwelling on what you do have access to and what you do have to be grateful for. And so that's my heart behind these. And I hope that you will jump on the bandwagon. I would love to hear what you guys are grateful for in the in the comments whether you're tuning in live or you're checking in later and watching it later uh, please comment because I love to hear those things I love to hear what's going on in your lives and what you're grateful for because then it spurs one another on too right we get to encourage one another and we get to be just a um, a rally around each other and around one another so uh, you know this week I have been thinking a lot about this season and the year of 2020. And I know that I've heard it a lot of times and maybe you have too, that, you know, people are saying, I cannot wait until 2020 is over. And I talked a little bit about this last week, if you were with us, but you know, just the, the focus on, um, you know, just making sure that we aren't dwelling on all the negative hard things that happened in 2020, but we say, okay, God, what, what did you want to teach me through all of this this year? You know, what did you want to take me through, um, on my journey through 2020? And yeah, you know, we don't have to necessarily be grateful for every single thing that happened in this year, but we can be grateful in it and we can choose to take things with us. We can choose to leave the things behind that don't need to be taken with us and to, you know, shed those off and leave them at the feet of the cross and say, Lord, 
I give it all to you. But then there are things that, you know, we've learned or things that we've really, we really don't want to forget that we want to take with us because it's been impactful for our lives. And there are so many things like that for 2020 that I'm like, okay, I learned this and I want to take it with me. I don't want to forget this. I don't ever want to forget. And so I've been reflecting on that a lot and I'm just so grateful. This is my kickstart with gratitude for tonight. And I would love to hear yours in the comments, but what I am choosing to pull from this last week and give me as a springboard and a catalyst into this upcoming week is the incredible amount of family time that we have gotten in 2020. And you know, my family and I, we homeschooled before the pandemic started. And so we didn't have that huge shift like so many people did with you know distance learning and, and all of that. But even so, we still, because of the circumstances of 2020, had a ton of extra family time and just our, our own little family. And I'm really, really grateful for it because I know that we won't get that time back. And I don't want to get to next year or even next month or the next decade and think, man, I blew it. I lost an opportunity to spend that extra time and to sit down and play on the floor with my you know, with my kids and to, you know, just invest in them and sit down and, and stay up later than normal to, to chat and, um, to spend time with my husband. And I'm just so grateful for that in 2020, because I think it's been a really monumental thing for us and has, uh, helped us to begin some new things and been a catalyst for us to, um, launch into the upcoming year. And so as you are thinking through this last year and this last, um, even just this last week, maybe take it bite-sized, <laughs> but thinking through this last week, you know, what are some things that you can choose to be grateful for that you don't want to forget? What don't you want to forget from this last week or month? And how can that impact you for the better moving forward? Because that's what gratitude does. It shifts our perspectives moving forward. And so what can you take with you uh, from this last week or this last month? And I just challenge you and encourage you to write it down and to um, keep a log, keep a journal. We keep gratitude journals and it's really powerful to go back and see all the things that God has done in his faithfulness. And, you know, even in the darkest days, um, fighting for those things that, you know, I was grateful for was probably one of the only things that, you know, kept my head up. And so if you're in that spot in the pit, I encourage you to do that. I really do. I strongly encourage you to take the time and um, focus, you know, this last week or month, if you'd like to, and think about the things that you can bring with you, the, the pieces of gratitude that you can bring along with you into the next season and things that you just don't want to forget because they're so good because God was so good. And for me, like I said, if you're just tuning in, that has been the family time that we've had. I'm so grateful for it because I know we're not going to get it back and I don't want to get to the other side of all of this and get back to the hustle and bustle of life and realize that I blew the opportunity. So, um, that's, how I am choosing to jumpstart my weeks and to really set the tone for the week ahead, to take a minute to pause and take a deep breath and process the last week <laughs> and then say, okay, here's how I'm going to live forward with intention. You know, maybe last week you had a hard time and you weren't as, um, peace filled and grateful as you could have been. So you have a time now to process that and find something to be grateful for in that last week and then move forward and live with intention and get a new fresh start this week. And as we move into the holiday season and, you know, Christmas shopping and Christmas gatherings and, you know, whatever that looks like for you in your season, in your city, in your family, I know it's going to be different than it's ever been before, but how can we move forward with intention and with gratitude because it's just it's so hard holidays are hard especially when you can't be with the ones that you love if that's um, the situation that you find yourself in and so I just encourage you to make sure that um, that you are paying attention and um, trying to live for live with intention right um, and you know I just I, I really encourage you in that to um, 
try to view it through the lens of gratitude. So um, it's, it's hard to be focused. It is. Um, yeah, it's hard to stay focused and to think about the things that are, um, you know, to put aside the things that are fogging your brain and that are hard to um, process. And it's not that you don't process them. It's not that you just kind of shove them under the rug and like, well, I'm, I'm grateful anyway. It, it's not that. It's more like even so, right, in the midst and in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this difficulty or this dark pit, this is gonna be the thing that helps me have enough strength to walk through the next day, right? Um, and so whatever the season looks like for you, I encourage you in that to stay focused and to stay um, intentional in your gratitude and your grateful living. Um, and it really does make a difference. It helps us to refocus our brains and stop all the spinning and all the crazy and just take a minute. You know, I've been uh, reading a lot lately about light and, um, oh, I love this from Sarah. I'm thankful for the opportunity to slow down and focus on things that really matter, to remember, to prioritize being love driven in everything and not rushed and frazzled. Yeah, even so. Amen. I love that. I love that. Love that. Yes. A A N. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Love ya. <laughs> um so that's uh I, I just I've been reading a lot about um the light. And it's interesting because it's been on my heart just and praying through this season and like God shine your light in the darkness, shine your light on the truth and uh, I just, I keep seeing it in scripture, whether it was this morning in Isaiah or, you know, in, in the book of Matthew, when it talks about the light of the world, um, sitting on a hill will not be, you know, will not be dimmed, will not be covered up. It can't be hidden. Right. And I just believe that we have such an opportunity to be light to other people. And sometimes as followers of Christ, that becomes a little bit, maybe an overused phrase, uh, but not so it's fresh it's new because there's so much sorrow and darkness and if you find yourself in that sorrow filled and dark spot uh, I just encourage you to go to the light and that is the, to the scriptures and look up you know in the book of Matthew I think it's six I looked it up before um, I started to make sure I didn't mess it up, but now it's slipping my brain. I think it's 615, Matthew 615, when it talks about the light of the world, sitting on a hill can't be hidden, but also just searching the scriptures for, um, for the, when he taught, when it talks about light and, you know, just going to the truth of the scriptures, even in the Psalms, when he talks through, you know, the Psalmist says, you do not leave me. You do not forsake me. Even when I walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death in Psalm 23, if you find yourself in that dark pit, the light is found in the scriptures. And for you who are followers of Christ and you're in ministry or you are, you know, well, we're all in ministry, right? To our neighbors, to our friends, whether we are on staff at a church or not, right? But uh, we have an opportunity to be a light in this dark time. And so I just encourage you to go before the Lord and ask him what that means for your context, because that's really been on my heart that, um, his light would shine through. And I believe that one of the ways that that happens is through, um, us. Right. And again, to let it not be cliche and let it not be something that is, is tired and heard over and over and over again, but something that, is fresh and new and we realize this is really important you know there are people's lives at stake and what can i do to be a light and encouragement to others and that's what i want to do too and i thought these videos were just one little way to be able to do that and uh to to be a light and an encouragement to you and so as i wrap this up tonight if you have prayer requests or anything like that please please uh comment or send me a message i would love to be praying with you and praying for you and just know just even if there's nobody else who is praying for you i would love to to do that my team at overflow worship would love to as well so um if that's you you can post it in the comments or send us a message and someone from my team will will see it and make sure that i get it and um yeah i just wanted to encourage you guys Let's live with intention, live in gratitude, and take a deep breath tonight 
and write down some things that you want to take with you from this last week or month and uh, let that be your focus for the upcoming weeks as we get into this season of um, busy or different or hard or great or stress or whatever that looks like for you and uh, let's let's live with intention so um, thanks for joining it's great to have you guys on here I'm glad that you are and I hope that um, you have a really great week and that you are encouraged um, one little side note if you are um, interested I'm doing a giveaway and it's a lot of really great stuff for um, especially people in ministry um, people on worship teams that kind of thing so you can head to my page on Instagram or Facebook at Andrea Olson music and you can enter the giveaway it ends Wednesday so you'll want to get that in ASAP because we'll choose the winner on Wednesday um, but that's happening and also a lot of these videos are also going on the podcast the overflow worship podcast that i'm the host of so if you want to hear some of these again not all of them but some of them are the audio is pulled and put on the podcast as well so if you want to check that out if you're a podcast listener uh, you can follow along and subscribe and all of those great things at overflow worship podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts um, so guys, thanks for joining. It was really great to be on here and um, just share my heart and hear yours. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. Be blessed. We'll talk to you later.